I use my pointer finger and my middle finger, but like, let's be honest, if you're going where you need to go, your two fingers are going to get pinched off. It's not about mm-hmm. how far you can go and you cannot hit the move the same way as you can yeah. hit it with your pointer finger and your middle finger. You can't, you can't, it's not about how far you can go. It's about the G period. <laughs> well, welcome to Queer Talk, the number one podcast to connect you to all of your favorite queer creators and where we share stories on all things queer related. My name is Brie Walker, Brie Logan on all platforms. And if you're not listening to this on Apple Podcasts and you're not subscribed, what you doing, baby? Hit that subscribe button. If you're listening on Spotify, go ahead and give us a follow. We got a great guest on today. She's a part of the Gay Bitches from Ohio gang gang. <laughs> You'll often see her putting ketchup on her face and strip teasing on her lives in her uniform. You can find her at Curl 9000 on TikTok. <laughs> Please welcome Shay. Hey, what's up? I don't do the ketchup anymore. I got rid of that. <laughs> Why? Everyone liked it. Uh, I don't want to be that cringy. Maybe that's my problem in the lady department. I'm too cringy. And they're like, this goes to a different level. <laughs> so you're too cringy for the ladies that you want to get. But for the, the the followers and things like that, they still like your shit. They, they eat it up. They love you it. They fucking love it. What made you think about your username and be like, hey, I'm going to put finger curl 9000 as my username and everyone's going to know me as that. So I did like this video. Uh, I was hanging out with one, a girl previously before Miss Rona happened. And I made a video about like a 15 second Jake. And like when you give her like the swirly whirly 5,000. So I think that was the first one. And then I elaborated to the finger curl 9,000. Oh my God. It's just a technique. I had to give it a trademark name. (laughs) Not just a normal finger curl, the fucking finger curl 9,000. It's got to be different. It can't be like every other person. So with that username, you want people to know that you know what you're fucking doing. I, that's exactly it. <laughs> they need to know there is techniques. The finger police needs to stop coming for me. So what's been going on with the finger police? You've had people in your comments shitting on you for, for all, your finger all, technique. All the time. They, they assume that I need to use my middle and uh, ring finger because apparently that's what all the baby gays do now. But... I use my first, my pointer finger and my middle finger, but like, let's be honest, if you're going where you need to go, your two fingers are going to get pinched off. It's not about Mm -hmm. how far you can go. And let's be honest, you cannot hit the move the same way as you can hit it with your finger, your first pointer finger, your middle finger. You can't, you can't, it's not about how far you can go. It's about the G, period. (laughs) So you're saying to use these, you're saying to use pointer finger, index finger. Yeah. Okay. exclusively and people are giving you shit for that if people online give me shit for it but i have okay. yet to hear any complaints on a receiving end of somebody a resounding yes for people in real life a resounding no for people who've never fucking met you <laughs> yes. On your shit. Okay. <laughs> yes i feel like i get hand cramps and i have to switch luckily for me though i had a surgery on my wrist so i don't cramp up <laughs> they gave me a bionic so. they helped me in my lesbianism actually yeah, who knew a surgery would be able to do that i mean shit we should all be getting the wrist surgery <laughs> we would they just go a little longer end- a little farther it's the lesbian viagra right fucking wrist it's surgery longer but not stronger as okay. i lost to every one of you on the arm wrestle i don't want to talk about it down. For the listeners who don't know, so um, a bunch of us, <laughs> we coined ourselves the Cape Bitches of Ohio, and we've been hanging out. Um, we haven't collaborated yet, but we've been hanging out a few times. And so as we're recording this, it was last Friday, and we all hung out, and everyone was, you know, in a big ego fashion trying to see who had the strongest arms. And Shay came in dead fucking last. I was somewhere in the middle there because I beat McKenna, but... Elise fucking destroyed me, and my arm hurts. My arm is literally sore. So (laughs) what's up with this ketchup thing? Why were you putting ketchup on your face in your videos? I just think it's funny. People think, like, that's actually what happens. Like, obviously, hand thing, yeah, can happen. But, like, face, like, if if you're doing that while somebody's on their period, that's not going to happen. That's not factual. But then all of these people in the comments are just flooding in, like, 
oh my god I would never do that or like they would not like do anything with a girl while on her period and that's like a stick like I question that like if you're you are a true lesbian you don't care if she's on her period like at all not one bit I agree I mean it's hard to take sides because obviously everyone has their preferences but and this is weird I don't have a problem with going down on someone who's on their period or having sex with someone who's on their period it doesn't like bother me in the least but sometimes when I'm on my period I just don't feel like as attractive as I normally do yeah. like I just feel gross and I like don't a lot of the time not all the time but a lot of the time I like won't want to because I just feel disgusting and then on top of that I'm on my period so I feel like sometimes like it, I think it's just women who don't want to like have sex because they don't feel as good and then Sam like don't give a fuck like, they're super horny. They don't care. It's personal preference, but I would never be like, yeah. ew. I would never, ever be like, ew, you're on your period. I don't want to touch you. Like, no fucking way. It never happens yeah. to me. That that was the most comments on it. And asking, how's the copper taste? Like, are you just jumping right into it? Or, like, if you did enough preheating to the oven, there's not going to be that happening just out the floodgate then. Yeah. I agree. And also, who gives a fuck? Like, your body has different smells, and your vagina is going to smell differently in your different Not everybody, yeah, everybody's stages. different. And yeah. that's fucking dumb. Also, if you're in it just for the taste, then, and you're, you know, like, you're not doing what you're, that's a, like, you're that's, not doing that's it right. That's a different thing, yeah. That's a whole different vibe of people that are just into blood in general. Can't relate on those. Ketchup is very much different. Mostly I stopped doing the videos because I absolutely hate ketchup and I'm tired of doing it and I don't want to get fake stuff to do it. And it was just a time in my life, you know, trying to be funny. And I, I moved on from that. Time in your life a couple months ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> During Miss Rona. Rona times. I don't know her. Somebody needs to do those videos, you know? Somebody needs to put a comedic twist to, to that topic because it's like a fucking topic that needs to be talked about. So, I've just, I've moved past it. I, I want to try to rebrand, but, you know, I'm stuck in the perpetual thirst trap. <laughs> that's what they want from you. I feel like, and that's what people don't want from me. Like, I've done thirst traps. I'm like, yeah, they're like, they do okay, but, like, they don't go viral. It's just sometimes my followers, like, it's not my brand. TikTok doesn't like when I, I do thirst traps. I don't know why they like it so much, because, like, I don't know. I don't put time into it. I just kind of knock it out in like, what, 15 to 60 seconds and then I'm done. Probably because your followers want to fuck you. <laughs> I mean, not that like mine don't, but I feel like I have a different fan base. Like, I feel like I have straight people who have seen all of my It's a Remix stuff and they're just like, it's so wholesome. I'm gonna follow her and all that shit, so. I'm trying to thirst trap my way to the top. It's worked out pretty good so far. You got a lot of thirst trap lesbians that are getting a lot of clout and stuff, like sex sells. It does. That's that's what I've been telling people. That's what I tell Natalie all the time. I was like, when she, uh, I'm about to call her out on this, when she hangs out with um, Pilot, <laughs> um, yes, she does a she does a different brand. When after hanging out with Pilot, that's when she does her thirst traps. But every other time, it's wholesome. <laughs> And then she'll um, send me these thirst traps, being bros, and then what's my opinion? And I'm like, Natalie, we both know we thirst followed each other in the beginning, <laughs> so what made you think I'm going to answer to this? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I feel like she definitely does that. Uh, for the listeners who don't know, Natalie is another creator. What's her? I think it's uh, underscore sorry underscore dad, and there might oh, be another yeah, yeah, underscore. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. But I feel like I, I started doing thirst traps more so when I started talking to, we'll call her H. <laughs> and because I, it was just for her. Like I was just doing them just to impress her. And then she would do videos just to impress me. <laughs> but we'd show them to the public because they'd just be on our fucking page. But it's, it's basically like the Great Gatsby throwing parties for, for Daisy, like hoping she'd wander but of, in. But of thirst traps. But, uh, but with thirst traps on TikTok. 
So Shay, you, you've done some videos talking about being a self talk. Uh, tell me a little bit about that. So yeah, I, I feel like there's a big thing on TikTok of you either have to be like a super masculine top Mm -hmm. Or you have to be, like, a super, like, bratty bottom, to put it. Yeah. Like, submissive bottom. And, like, there's really no in-between thing of it. And, like, yes, I am a top. But, like, at the end of the day, I'm sorry. After I finish doing what I'm doing, I want to be the little spoon after. Like, I just put in how much work and did all of that. Like, I still want to be babied. I get it. I feel the same way. I think a lot of tops are like that, though, not just soft tops. I they're, I just, they're secret they're secret about it though I'm just open book about it like I don't care like what what is it gonna do to me like what is it gonna hurt my online persona no like just be open about it like no nah. well everybody's vulnerable in closed doors and has baby talk and does all that stuff like it the hey mamas do it the fucking top buns do it like all the all of those super masks or any butch studs you know stems all of that like they fucking do it in closed doors because like the person that you like you can be super cute and like do all that shit with because like i i feel the same way you know because i'm more of a top i'm a switch but i prefer and i have preference for being a toppy top but uh yeah right after i'm like i'm baby <laughs> you yeah know? i'm like after after doing that and then mine I'm like all right just come up around me it's like we're done like let me want... cur let me curl up onto your chest right now <laughs> yes head on a titty and I want you to hold me <laughs> but the thing is I'm like five two so every girl that like I'm with is always taller than me so like of course what am I gonna look like a koala on somebody's back I'm gonna be like their little jetpack, so it only makes sense <laughs> that I'm little spoon, <laughs> little fucking jetpack. That's absolutely hilarious. Do you think that I feel like girls like that though? Like I haven't encountered anybody that was like ew or like oh that's too sensitive or was like turned off by that. Oh, well, I haven't either. I find a lot of girls actually like the fact that, like, I want to be babied after. Like, a lot of the girls that I have talked to, they're like, yeah, I want to be the big spoon. And I'm like, all right, S like, saves me some, like, room. I don't have to feel awkward. Yeah, I've always kind of felt that way just because even though, like, I do am more of a top and prefer that, um, like, I'm not, like, su like, I'm a tomboy, but I'm not, like, super masculine uh, presenting. I'm super petite, too. So, like, Part of me is just like, oh, God, like, am I going to be masculine enough, like, yeah. for this person? Like, I'm kind of, like, you know, because you, you don't know who they've been with in the past, and I'm like, shit, like, do I measure up? It's like, this is it. Like, I'm not getting any more masculine or feminine. Like, this is how I am. Uh, so that's kind of something that I all think about. Like, a tiny insecurity. Like, you never know. And even if it does happen, though, like, it's like, what's the worst case scenario? Like, they weren't for you. Yeah. There's a sea of people out there that'll be like yes I will little spoon you and you will be baby after like it's fine I also feel like though like I don't exactly fit in with either masculine and or feminine or like stutter stem because I have such like a different aesthetic I feel like because I'm still very feminine like I may wear masculine clothes somewhat in a way but like I don't I feel like I don't fit in with a traditional lesbian and that's been the problem here in Columbus is the gay men always want to talk to me they always buy me drinks they swear that I'm a twink like I take it as a compliment because if a gay that's high praise from like from gay men honestly oh yeah completely but wouldn't you like to <laughs> I, I love that you get hit on by by twinks and get free drinks but like wouldn't it be nice to get hit on by women <laughs> <laughs> it would be nice but you know it just hasn't happened yet for me I've tried I've tried and I shot and I missed and I shot again and I missed so I just I don't do that in the bars anymore I strictly so just you were like oh for time. two I'm hanging up the towel like I'm not fucking doing it anymore and you want you want the women to come to you yeah I feel like it's like on tinder also <laughs> like I look that because I go for feminine women so like they see my profile and I feel like they expect because I'm more masculine to be the one to message them first. 
So I literally put in my bio the one time and I said something about like, let's play a little game and see who's going to like message first or something like that. Yeah. None of them do. The, I don't know why. I don't understand what goes through a femme's brain that they can't shoot their shot. But yeah. like I have to. I don't know. Like at the end of the day, we we both have a set of tits. Like, yeah, I feel like it's funny because I feel like you're a little bit more masculine presenting than me, but I feel like I have more masculine energy. I, which is interesting. My my persona on TikTok is a is a sham. I I'm not that <laughs> cocky in real life. I'm not. I'm sorry to tell you, people. I'm not that cocky in real life. I am shy and awkward, and I don't know how to exactly talk to women. It's funny because when I met you and I was planning on meeting you, I was like, I feel like, I wonder if she's going to be as douchey as she is in her fucking videos. I'm and not. you were, which is good. I was, I was about to be like, oh, fuck. Like, if she really embodied this, like, I don't know if we can no. hang out. No, it's just, uh, like, it's not an online thing. That's how, like, the confident for me, it's like embodying the confidence that, like, I wish that I would have like yeah. in public scenarios with people, but it just doesn't happen. I overthink it. So talking about like not hitting on women and stuff like that, how did you end up being married? Like how did that happen? That was a different time in my life. So I grew up in like a super conservative, like Republican family and like church twice on Sundays, once on Wednesdays, like from birth to I moved out of the house. So I basically was like, I have to get out of Ohio. So I was like, the army is my ticket. Cause all my siblings had been in and everything. So I was like, all right, done. So yeah, basic training is a good time. If you want to know where to meet girls, that's a great summer camp. Pence's camp has nothing on boot camp. I did not sleep alone until I got to my first duty station. And that was a while, like a big period of time. So I left in end of July for basic. And I finished that in October. And then I was in AIT from October to March. Never slept alone. Not one night, the whole time. Damn, girl. Yeah, so the sto story on the marriage part. <laughs> yeah. So um AIT land obviously she wasn't there right when I got there so I had been talking to this girl from like basic that like was my basic boo and that didn't work out and we got to go home for Christmas and that's when that like ended and then I come back and this girl comes into the cycle so oh this is a sad I wasn't even cocky in this either I was cocky on the floor. I had a bunch of girls like fighting for my attention during like uh, bed call and stuff because we had to stand out in the hall and like go like show them that we were there. So one night, what name do I give her? Long Island. Okay. Long Island because that's, yeah, that's where she was from. So Long Island came in January once we were back and I was towards like the front of the hall and she was at like the end of the hall and like I had been like making eyes because I'm like dang she's kind of cute so I had my roommate go down there and like take a piece of paper with my phone number like I didn't even do it I didn't do it no confidence to do it for whatever reason and then she ended up like texting me or whatever and then that's when the whirlwind started so we started dating oh this is some like mad tea on this whole story we're going from the beginning <laughs> to the end we're getting deep okay so this is a deep story so we had started hanging out like dating and she had to go home on like emergency leave so I think like her grandma like passed away or something so she's there and I get a phone call <laughs> um from apparently her girlfriend Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, so Long Island's in the background telling me to say, like, none of it's true. Like, we weren't dating and anything like that. And I was like, I'm not going to lie to this girl, like, to the girlfriend. Because, like, I feel bad. I didn't want to feel like I, like, slid in on somebody's girl or stuff like that. Like, nobody knew. That should have been clue number one. Anyway, mm -hmm. so she comes back, whatever. I Stupid. I let it pass because I was like, 
I'm in love. I want to fill that, that, that hole. So we were still together up until I left. And then I left to go home for like a week. Like once I had already like graduated and she broke things off. I was devastated about it. I was like, I'm so in love with this girl. Like, that's it. Like, that's what I want. So I go to Hawaii, whatever. Time passes. And then one day out of the blue, she like texts me and like apologizes for everything that she did. And I was like, you know what? I've still been hung, hung up on her. Like, I haven't done anything with anybody else since. And so I went out on a limb and she was still, she was still in AIT. And I sent uh, a bouquet of flowers and wrote on the card, like, in Hawaiian, like, will you marry me? And I didn't think it was, I didn't take it serious. But she said yes. <gasps> so, so then it became Whoa. serious. Oh. <laughs> it became serious. And uh, basically, I had no, nothing to do in any of the planning of this whole entire wedding. Like, her family did it. Like, I literally flew from Hawaii to... New York and just walked into it I had I had none of my I had none of my family there they did not want to come oh my god so I was in a wedding with a a bunch of people that I had no idea of never met and um yeah we got married and this was like right when um gay marriage became legal too back in 2015 like it got legalized in June and we got married in July so how old were you like 19 I was 19 I was a fresh baby (gasps) baby baby (laughs) I thought it would be a good idea so we spent like maybe a couple days together because she was home doing like recruitment stuff before she went to her duty station and she didn't have the same orders to where I was at so she was getting stationed in Washington and I was still in Hawaii so that and I fly back to Hawaii. She goes to her duty station. Things are going well. And then the basic boo and I had like become friends again. Long Island did not like that. And um, like I was Yikes. telling her like stories of like stuff before and she, to basic boo and she didn't like that. And she ended up texting Long Island Uh-oh. and sending screenshots from like the day that like was getting married like I had nobody there and I did not like basic boo in any type of way by then like it was yeah she went back to her boyfriend and stuff like that like I was fine with it like we had just spent 10 weeks of hell together so it was complete friendship at that point like yeah there was nothing to that and I had like texted her and I was like I hope you find somebody who makes you as happy as I am like right now like getting married yeah and um Long Island took that as me saying that I wanted to marry basic boo and accused me of cheating with somebody who I was out on back in Hawaii at this point when she claims it I don't know how I cheated with somebody who's was in Georgia while I was in the middle of the ocean I don't I don't know how that worked out but apparently that happened then she texted me one day I was like I want a divorce wouldn't call me and only just said that Wow. So how did it happen? Did she send the divorce papers to you? Like, what happened? Oh, we're not even there yet. (laughs) Okay. 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 Sorry. I'm getting excited. I'm getting excited. I need to know. (laughs) It's a long story. So she had texted me that, and I went to my commander, and I said, like, I need to fly out to Washington. Like, I don't know what's happening. Um, Like, something's happening with my, like, wife at the time. Like, I gotta go. So... She didn't even know. I flew out a day later from Hawaii to Washington. And I get there, and I had a few friends from AIT that were there and, like, um, let me stay with them. But, yeah, um, took her three days to see me. I was sitting by her, like, barracks, you know, with a bouquet of rainbow roses. And, wow. yeah, come to uh, find out. Um, oh, I saw this guy on her Snapchat. And she was, like, she posted on her story, and she was, like, in a bra, and a dude was there. And she's, like, oh, "Oh, no, I'm doing laundry, this, that, and that. And I'm, like, okay. 
So it took her three days to finally see me. And then I like stayed the night with her. I, I got her like a temporary ring like when we got married because everything was like moving so fast and like you don't make that much money right off the bat in the army yeah. so then like I had gotten her a new one and like I did like a full like was doing a full like proposal thing that like she didn't get so like I had flower petals like spelling out like marry me in it and then like had candles and everything had sushi for her whatever while at work and then all of a sudden she was like you can't stay here like I have to move so I had to clean up all of that nothing um basically I'm stranded here with no car nothing just sitting outside and she had moved and I was like you have my bags like I just want to come get my stuff refused to do it and then finally she let me and this dude was there wow so she'd been the one yeah. cheating the whole time and so she had accused you of doing it when she was doing it the entire she, time. She was sleeping with everybody at uh, <gasps> JBLM. Wow. So then I go back. It ended, whatever. And it hadn't officially, like, paperwork or anything like that. Because my, I refused to file for it because I didn't ask. I didn't ask for it. I didn't want it. And then um, one, ooh. Also, when I was in her room the night that I stayed with her, there was condoms in plan B in there. And I was like, oh, who's this? Like, why do you have this here? And she tried to blame it on her roommate, who later I befriended, and she was a lesbian and dating one of my buddies from AIT. Oh, wow. That's backstory. So, yeah, I go back. I go back to Hawaii. And we still hadn't filed or anything. And I go visit my sister for Christmas. Meanwhile, Long Island's, like, texting me saying, like, we should be spending Christmas together, da 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 and I'm like, whatever, okay, but you're still asking me for a divorce, cool, and that passes, and then somebody one day sent me a screenshot that she had posted, um, I think on her Instagram or something, because I didn't follow her at this point, of a sonogram. So she got pregnant she, by the dude. She, not that same dude. Oh, fuck! Oh God! Holy shit! Yeah. yeah. So she got she got pregnant before we even wow. got divorced. <laughs> oh yeah, you dodged a bullet there. So that's that's the story on that. And then you know I got sent to the same duty station she was at, and she would show up at my work all the time. So that's wow. It was fun. That's crazy though. But also, you did dodge a bullet. I mean, you did marry her, but like you. Like, what if, like, I, uh, that didn't happen until later on? Yeah, I also was super young. So, like, I my idea of love and that, I was just, like, the first person that says that they love me. I'm, like, yep, that's that's what I want. Yeah. Which, like, a lot of growth since then of being, like, you know what? I actually have to think things through. Yeah, so. Was so that your first years? love? No. That wasn't your first love? Are we talking, like, first, like, girl crush or, like, love in general? So was she the first person that you, the first girl you fell in love with? At that time, yes. But now it, I realize that it was not that. I think it yeah. was just infatuation almost. Mm -hmm. But I did not see it that way at 19 years old. So if anybody's 19 and thinking about getting married or anything like that, how about you just uh, wait on it, put it in the drawer, just sit on it for a little bit. Pump the brakes. And don't go on the gas like I did. Don't make the same mistake. Yeah, those, oh man, first loves are very intense and uh, make you do crazy shit. So I I feel you on that. I mean, I've never like gotten married to someone who got pregnant while they were still married to me because they were cheating on me. But <laughs> <laughs> I definitely like fallen in love with someone who was right for me in the end and turned out to just not, you know, be the best best thing. Oh, wow. So, like, what did you take away from that? Like, what what were some big learning things that you took away from that relationship? I mean, once I finally got out of the Army and was out of Washington and out of that scenario, like, it gave me a time to just, like, reflect and be, like, actually think of, like, all the things that she had, like, said that, like, I was, like, shitty. And I had to go through, like, years of therapy after this that, like, it was not me. She wants to play victim. 
against everybody else. And I just had to learn that like, I'm worthy of like love and stuff like that. And it was just decisions were made and it happened for a reason. I don't know why, but it was part of my personal growth process. And I'm glad, in a way, like I'm glad that it, it had happened because it did teach me like a lot in like the scheme of like relationships and things. But like also at the same time, like I was 19 years old. Did I actually need that? Yeah. No, I completely understand. But yeah, I guess it was part of your process, you know? Like some people get married to the wrong fucking people. Some people marry dudes when they really should be marrying chicks. Some girls are with guys right now and are secretly in the closet. So maybe one girl, the girl you end up with will be someone that was also married, but like married to like maybe a dude and then got divorced. Maybe. Maybe though they have been married before, but you know, I'm kinda hoping not. I wanna be the I wanna be the butt of that joke. It's gonna be funny. <laughs> <laughs> you want all the intention in the relationship for being married once and having yep. it be fucked up. That's, you don't want to be. A, you thing. don't want to have another fuck shit. You want to be the only fuck shit. Yeah, but like that's one thing that like if I'm getting serious with somebody that like I disclose right off the bat because that's something like I feel like if I don't disclose and it comes out later on, it'd be, like, a betraying of, like, something for somebody that, like, I did do all of that. I mean, yeah, I think being open with that, because, like, first of all, people can, sh when they do background checks, they can see that you got married, so, like. But it was annulled, so technically, legally, we were never married. Well, even if there was no evidence, like, yeah, it is a good thing to be, like, hey, like, I was married, because, like, it's a huge commitment. Um, yeah, like, I, I, I did that. I, I did the whole aisle thing. That's some nuts, and that's something that, like, because we've hung out a, a few times, and we have not talked about it, so that's something that I didn't know about you. Probably Damn. one of the, like, scariest things that, like, I've done, and, like, I've thrown grenades, but, like, that was fine, but, like, standing at the end of a, what is it, an, a, like, an aisle? Yeah. Being looked at by a bunch of people that I have no idea who, I should have known that day, like, I just, I took it too far. Was there ever a point when you were getting married or walking down the aisle or saying vows or putting on rings where you were like, what the fuck am I doing? Before, right before the wedding. I was so sick right before it. And like, I was just like pacing back and like back and forth. And like, I don't know if I'm making the right decision, but like all of her family put all like this money together and all of that to like put this whole wedding. Like there was... We had the location for the wedding. I had zero planning in any of this. So like, it, like I felt like if I just was like, yeah, no, I just like flew 12 hours here. That's some things crazy shit, too, Jay. Things had gone too far. What is she up to now? Have you followed up on her? Is she with baby daddy or is she with the dude that you saw? Oh, she's married to baby daddy and they have two other kids. So if uh, Long Island's listening to this, cause I know she's part of my Sorry. fan club of haterade um i'm happy for you and your three kids i i mistakes were made things were said but you know i'm gonna be the bigger person it you may shade me online and on tiktok but you know i'm not gonna stoop to that level oh everybody makes fucking mistakes well you're not gonna do it a second time that's for fucking sure <laughs> nope so what's dating like for you right now shay what's been going on with you a after lot the marriage of what's happening like, are we talking current or, like, after that? We'll do, we can do after and we can do current. Oh, after. You know, my confidence was, I had, like, did I? After, I had a little bit of a fuckboy stage. Not much. But, you know, just a little bit. And then I went to Washington, continued that fuckboy stage, and... Then I was just put into like a super toxic environment because of everything. That's a whole other story of military stuff. But um, yeah, so I didn't have like as much confidence and I had been like on medication and stuff like that. And you know, medication makes you gain weight and mm -hmm. whatever. So I didn't have as much, I didn't look at myself like the way that I do now. I was on Tinder one day and I was like, whatever I guess this girl's fine and we hung out and then I she basically just made me start dating her and that ended up 
being my worst decision ever. She's worse decision than the marriage. That one, whole other story. We all have that one abusive ex. Got you when you were, like, your most vulnerable. Yeah, and she made it, like, worse. She would, like, tell me I, like, she would not let me post any pictures of myself, like, on Instagram. And, like, telling me, like, all the time that I was, like, ugly and nobody wants to see me and all of that just the level of that she would take things of like claiming that she had cheated and like telling me that just to see if I would leave and then I would and then being like oh I lied about it like I can't believe that you would leave me like you just told me you cheated on me like I'm sorry can I have a moment here oh my god what a fucking piece of shit yeah, she would go as far to make uh, fake Instagram accounts to try and message me to see if, like, I would DM them back. Had me on Live 360, so if I left my house, it would alert her, like, within, like, a certain radius. Um, she child-locked my phone, like, she took it one night, so I couldn't download any apps. That's nuts. Yeah. That's crazy. How did you, like, get out of that? Like, how did you finally, like, leave and say, like, enough is enough? Um, luckily, she moved back home, so it kind of did that way, and, uh, I changed my phone number, well, so it was just go. bad. It was bad. I haven't talked since, but her and my ex, ex-wife ex are besties now. They bonded <laughs> over me. I, I am the oh, ex. Oh, no. Because she was another military girl? Yeah. And her sis, her older sister was also in the military, and she was the same job as me and the ex-wife, which is a very small group of people in the military. So, wow. Yikes. You got yourself into some shit! I did. I did not have a good time Oof. in Washington as far as that. Damn. It's been good since I've been out. I had a good time in Hawaii. I went to Washington, had a terrible time. And then since I've been out, it's been, it's been wild. So... And we'll get back to what's going on in your current dating life, but, like, in terms of the military, I know you mentioned just, like, the shit that goes on in basic, and that seemed pretty lit. What what was it like being gay in the military? I mean, at least during basic, my female drill sergeant was also gay, okay. so she was super nice to us. I kind of went into basic training before I left of like my mom telling me like don't tell anybody that you're gay they're gonna beat you up and stuff like that so yeah. like when I when I would go it was like an open shower so luckily if I don't we couldn't have contacts or whatever so luckily I'm blind enough that like when I take off my glasses I can't see anybody so I would literally go to the shower all the way to the wall and like shower facing the wall because like I didn't want anybody to know and I was scared yeah. But then, like, everybody ended up being super gay <laughs> in the whole entire trailer. So that, it was fun. It wasn't until, like, I actually got to my unit because my job was, like, a super male-dominant job. I literally had an NCO one day tell me that he would pay me a grand to have sex with a dude. And this is just the stuff that I would deal on the daily. They would oh just, God. all the time, it, like, never ended. It was a weird, different kind of time because Don't Ask, Don't Tell got repealed, like, what, 2013? Yeah. Or 2012, and I joined in 2014. So it was still, like, it was still, like, an adjustment period. And this was before, like, transgenders and things became an issue. That also happened while I was in. So it was, it was like, an adjustment period. Are I mean, talking I, about when they were defunding, um, like resources for trans people in the military and yeah that, that started happening okay. that started happening like about like two years of me being in so like 2016 I mean I don't think that I got looked at any different I mean I was in the male job male dominant job so I mean I felt like the guys could more so relate with me in a way that I was just like another bro to them yeah. So, like, I would hang out, like, in Hawaii, like, basically all of my friends were guys. Just because, like, that's what I worked with all day. But I'm not going to say for every gay person in the military it's the same thing. Because it's obviously different. Like, 
if you're like a gay man in like the infantry or like this cab scout like you're probably gonna get a lot more stuff than what a female would I feel like the guys are more scared of gay men than they are gay women they just fetishize us that's super interesting I feel like it's because of that you know like exhibiting more masculine traits and obviously they don't see you as a threat but somehow they see men who may be more feminine even if they're not feminine they're masculine gay men like they see it as somehow like a threat right and that like I would be I would be afraid to be a gay man in the military for sure the guys weren't sleeping with other guys during basic the way the females were sleeping with other females during basic (laughs) that's that's for sure we we would discuss like once we graduated we discussed it because I had a couple like guy friends from my basic and they were like that was happening in your like trailer like that was not happening over here and I was like well that sucks for you it's so weird because you hear about like you know being in prison and how there's a lot of men who are you know having sex with other men but somehow in the military like it's not happening I wonder what the difference is Obviously, it's different um, people, we, right? But. We have an M16, Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> Shit, yeah, I didn't think yeah. about that. I don't know. A majority of them, they're younger, like, fresh graduated. So a lot of people just hadn't been exposed to it, or, like, probably still haven't been exposed to it this time now. It's weird. That's some crazy shit. I, it's weird, because, like, I don't... I don't have any family members besides like, you know, great uncles that were in the army. So like, I didn't come from like an army family. Um, so I never really knew what went on. Uh, like if that were like a path that I had wanted, like wanted to take, you know, after college or something like that. So that's really interesting. My recommendation, if you want to join the military, um, don't, I mean, yes, it does pay for your college and stuff like that, but mentally do you want to deal with that? You don't. What was it like getting out? Was it hard to adjust after getting out of the military? I'm still adjusting because that's like, yeah, because you get put, you're in a uniform. Basically, you're just a number. Like, you can't, like, I couldn't have piercings. I had to have my hair cut a certain way. I couldn't have had my hair cut the way it is now because it would have been a faddish haircut. So basically, you just don't you couldn't have any like hair color whatever it just had to be normal and I don't know I just didn't like the fact that I couldn't fully express myself in like that way and you're getting told literally what time to wake up what to wear what you eat what you're doing and what to think like you don't have what's your first right amendment that's like your freedom of speech Mm mm-hmm you don't have it. You're not allowed. So wow. what they tell you and what to think is what you do. Like if I were to speak, like say if I were like in the military right now and I probably spoke up against like political issues going on, like I could get reprimanded by the military for that. Because you're speaking out for what you believe in and they obviously yeah. are not on the same page with that. So they're going to reprimand you. Wouldn't they want to reprimand people who aren't on the same page of social activism? Like, wouldn't you think it'd be flipped? But of course not. No, because you're property of the government until the day that you get out. Wow. So yeah, it's, it's been, it's been an adjustment. Cause like literally I went from high school straight into that. So I mean, high school, I had to be like secretly like, in the closet I was out but like mom threw it back in there and put a lock on it so whatever and then going into the military like in the time period that I should have like figured out and like become more of myself from like 19 to 22 like prime time for that so I don't know it's just been weird because I know I knew who I was in uniform but I didn't know who I was outside of it and, like, I'm still trying to figure that out. It's been, what, three years now? And yeah. I Like, it's still, it's still weird. Do you think it's because of, like, the de-individuation that goes on? And also, when you're coming from not knowing much, being in high school, not, like, seeing the world or being, or having those experiences, and then going straight from that, you know, you know, where you're in that small bubble to then another small bubble, and then you're told all of these things, and it's, 
you're still young, you know, your brain isn't yeah. fully formed and they de-individuate you. Like they, they make you just a part of the collective. So yeah, it makes sense when you get out and you don't know who the fuck you are because they told you that you were just everyone else and they stripped you of that individuality. Yeah. You were literally just a fish in a tank and that, and then you're getting thrown out in a fish in a big ocean and you're like, uh, what do I do now? What's, what's next? Yeah. And like, that was, that was my like 20 year plan of what I was going to do, but that, that got cut short medically. So yeah, I'm still trying to figure out what I want to do now. I haven't, I haven't gotten there. I'm just taking my time. I'm figuring myself out, figure out what I like or don't like just kind of vibing. I just want to travel. I feel like a lot of people can relate to that. A lot of listeners can relate to that, like not knowing what direction they have. And like, I felt the same way, even though I, I wasn't in the army. Like I, I thought I had a direction after, you know, during college. And then after college, I was like, fuck, I don't want to do what I wanted to do. And I tried a bunch of things. And like, that's the thing that was the best for me is to not be sedentary and be inactive, like being actively trying to figure out what I want to do, whether that's taking a shitty job that I didn't really want, but then that shitty job got me a better job. And then it got me into this network, you know, like all of these things kind of masterfully come together, but you have to like get the ball rolling to figure it out. It's not going to be like your first thing you do after the military, after college or after high school is going to be the it thing. Um, it, It just isn't. Yeah. I mean, I, I tried college for a little bit. I went for like three semesters, but like my college is paid for and I tried a couple of different majors and like they just weren't sticking with me and I don't want to waste my GI bill until I definitively know what I want to do because then I'm just taking a bunch of classes that go towards like nothing because I don't know what my major is going to be and what it'll go to. That makes sense. I get that. But I also believe that college is not for everybody. I think you're right. Some things, some things I agree that you need a degree for, but then I think a lot of other things, like, you really don't. You do it by, like, on-the-job training and just learn by doing. It's just repetition. It's muscle memory. I mean, my job is sales, and you, you've you never needed a, a degree in sales. Like, before, I don't know when they started making it a requirement of sales no. people, but, like, sales is a people-person job. It's building relationships. No. It is not, you, like... There's so many things in college that you don't need a degree for. Like you do need a degree for architecture, for being a doctor, a nurse, an educator, like those specific majors that go for a specific thing. Like you're majoring in education, you're going to be a teacher. You're majoring in nursing, you're going to be a nurse, you know, that kind of stuff. But like business, majoring in business, like who made, that's like, that's such a sham degree that gets roasted the most of people that I know. Cause it's such an easy degree to like do compared to like people who are doing intensive stuff like why do you actually need a degree to go work at corporate you don't exactly you absolutely don't I definitely don't fucking need I didn't need my degree I mean I liked my degree and I I liked college and I liked what I learned I was a psych major like of course I wasn't I thought I was going to be getting a doctorate and things like that which you definitely need to be in college for but like I love the stuff that I learned in psychology, like for its own sake. Like I loved academia for its own sake. I just wish it didn't cost so fucking much. Like I could have learned that shit on my own. I mean, I'm glad that I have a degree obviously because I have like a, you know, like a nice job, but it it just, I don't see the the worth in paying, you know, 30 to a hundred grand for something like that. Just for a piece piece of paper. I feel like now after like Corona and stuff, I feel like people are going to realize more so that, and I also think once the older generation starts to get pushed out of politics and things like that, there's going to be like a systematic change of how we're going to end up actually doing things. Once our generation comes to, to being in those positions. I think you're right. And I think people are already realizing it with um, quarantine and, and everything that's been happening and working from home. Like, I don't know about you, but like my job is more productive. Like the people are more being more productive so it's showing the company like, hey, people are more productive and they're happier at home because you know they're how much being money able to get comp- stuff done. You know how much money like um, corporations could save if they just close their offices and their people work from home? Yeah. So much money. Let's put that to something else. Um, quote that I saw on like an Instagram story that was basically like, 
when people aren't working 40 hours a week, they have more time, which isn't good for consumerism because consumerism wants people to have less time so that they value convenience so that they buy more shit. Yeah. And not that I, not that convenience isn't, it's the root of all evil, evil at all. Like I love my, I love Amazon prime and all that shit, but like, it love does Amazon. make sense. Like you don't need 40 hours in a work week for the vast majority of jobs. So why am I there for eight hours? when I could do the job and in, in, in less than that. Yeah, they just want to spread things sense. out in a way. I don't know. Can't relate on working eight hours in the military. It's way longer than that. How many hours were you working? So you have PT from 0630 to like 08. And then you have an hour and a half to go home, shower, eat breakfast, and then be at work starting at 9 30 it depends on your job some people are only working nine to five but those are like paperwork people but like motor pool I'd get there like 9 30 some days I wouldn't get out of work until like past midnight and then be expected to wake up and PT yet again same work day Jesus zero time Christ. for anything that and awful. that doesn't even that doesn't even include time in the field that you're literally in there for two weeks and working all day do you think, do you feel like it's worth it because of, you know, how you get set up after the military with GI bills and other things, other benefits? Do you think that you feel like it was worth it to you? For me personally, no. I could have avoided a lot of different things. It just, they don't believe in anybody's like mental health or anything like that. I just, I, I wouldn't do it. Like if I could do a do over, I wouldn't have gone again. Gotcha. Like, yeah, I met a lot of cool people, but I wouldn't do it again especially with everything going on right now. Like I'm kind of sad that I even put on a uniform to be quite honest, to serve whatever I thought this country stood for at the time. But I mean, and you were young too. And that's the thing they get people who are young and impressionable and they haven't really made their decisions on what they feel because they haven't experienced enough. And also our education system doesn't teach us everything that goes on. So you don't have a good breadth of knowledge after high school at least in my high school I didn't so they get you where you're like that I feel like I would have felt the same way as you if I had done that um because I was also grew up in a super republican family you know uh very pro-military so yeah yeah. they they, they still love Trump oh yeah I, I I show up to the house and I'm the liberal now my dad always tries to bring up his my dad always tries to bring up his Fox News and, you know, I, I try to debate, but, you know, we just, we go around in circles. Yeah. Goes nowhere. I don't really bring it up that much anymore, but I don't obviously like up. we grew he up Republican, up. like at some point, like I was, I, I did identify as a Republican because I grew up in that. I didn't, I had yeah. to take some time to reevaluate and process information and figure myself out and obviously coming out made things different too. It's a process. What a what a time to be alive. I don't know what's coming up next on our episode of the Black Mirror. I'm fingers crossed it's aliens. <laughs> I'm hoping. I'm hoping. The aliens just come up, they're like, they just want to fuck shit up. They're like, you know what, you guys got a lot going on. This is the time of the day. Like, let's go. Yeah, they're just they're just gonna pop up and be like, yo, what's good? And be like, <laughs> the way 2020 is gone, it wouldn't it would not shock me. Be like, hey, y'all need our help. You guys look like you're about to <laughs> um... You look like you're struggling. You're gonna implode soon. Yeah. Like we'll keep you alive. We'll keep the human race alive. Crazy stuff. So what's been going on with you lately? So you're still posting videos. You're not posting ketchup on your face anymore. What's what's been going on with you? I've gone back to work. That's been that's been a thing. That's that's why I haven't been posting as much because they literally have me working like almost every day. I don't know, just hanging out, making new networks with friends, longboarding, hanging out with my dog, <laughs> drinking a lot. <laughs> still from Miss Rona times. <laughs> are you hanging out are you talking to anybody any lucky ladies uh i mean yeah talking to somebody care to dish oh uh, we'll just call her ozzy okay what's up with ozzy um yeah so obviously she has tiktok and um i had like my instagram link so she followed me on instagram 
and you know I, I am one of those people that I go and look at my followers to who follows me to see you know if they're cute yeah so she was kind of cute she, not kind of cute she was really cute mm-hmm. so you know slid into the dms and it's it's been since are you out of the dog house now with her I don't think I ever technically was in the dog house okay. to be fair she kind of got me back though really she definitely yeah this last weekend ooh I'm sorry, Ozzy, if you're definitely like going to listen to this. <laughs> so she went out with uh, her two straight best friends this last weekend. And, you know, she sent me some Snapchats of her just fully macking on her. Like, to the level of I thought that they were about to go into the bathroom stall. <laughs> so to be fair, I kind of deserve that. Yeah. Okay. But it's fine. They're, they're straight. Tip for tat. Like, tip for tat. Well, what did you feel like you did that – could have put you in the doghouse. Oh, I was just being rude. That that was it. That's all you were. Okay, I don't. I didn't remember because it was when we were all hanging out, and I don't really remember much I, uh, about that. I guess she kept like saying that I was cute or whatever, and like was being very argumentative on it. Like, no, I'm oh. not. <laughs> just being rude to that, and that that was oh, another. She just didn't. Gotcha. She didn't appreciate that. But also, I was blacked. So yeah, you were blacked out. I was blacked out. So to be fair, that was not me. That was Brady. Brady's her alter ego for all the it's listeners. Also, also the name of what my said twin that I absorbed in utero's name was supposed to be. <laughs> oh yeah, you absorbed a twin <laughs> in the womb. And now I you're did. gonna call yourself that fucking twin. That's <laughs> Yeah. That's fucking sick, but I love there it. could have honestly, he was probably straight and I was like, you know what? There's only room for one of us out here. And it, I just happen to be the stronger one in that. So, like, I may not win at arm wrestling, but I won in the uterus, so. Oh, my God. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You're funny. But, yeah, other than that, I'm, I'm single. Shay is single. So, She's ready to mingle. All right, Shay, you want to do uh, lightning round? You want to answer some questions really fast? Ooh, yeah. Ask. Sweet. Sweet. Okay. Let's see what we got here. All right. Talking or texting? Talking. Dog or cat? Dog. Gold star or skyline? Uh, I grew up in Northwest Ohio, so I don't know. We didn't have it up there, so neither. Jesus <laughs> I've Christ. never been to are you even? Or. Are you even an Ohioan? What the fuck? I had different things. We didn't have that up north. Fine, okay, I'll it's do another Cedar, one. We had Cedar Point in Kalahari. All right, I'll do another one. Uh, UDF or graders? UDF. Flannels or Hawaiian shirts? Hawaiian all the way. I will not wear flannel. Today uh, I just didn't. <laughs> First of all, you look like a fucking 80s, like, you look like an 80s dad who, like, just started going jogging. I did. It's a vibe. <laughs> I'm going for that 90s aesthetic. It's, it just goes with the hair. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. Uh, favorite queer movie? Ooh. Fried Green Tomatoes such a fucking good movie it's so subtle that most people don't catch on my mom didn't realize it and that's one of her favorite movies it's like mom do you realize like she totally has a big fat lesbian crush on her she's like no they're just friends it's like mom you call me edgy for a reason <laughs> god i love edgy do you relate to edgy more than ruth yes. me too yeah i don't relate to ruth whatsoever I do like that actress though. She's really hot. Oh, she's, she's in weeds. Yeah. Yes. Mm. I watched she's the like whole series. 50, just she was but in she it. looks like she's 30. Oh. She she could get it. I don't like I don't go oh, I don't man. go for older women, but like I wouldn't say no. I would never say no. But I like I like a little bit older women. Not like I can't go anything older than like I wouldn't be able to go anything older than my like my parents. So they're like in their late forties. Yeah. Well, they're almost fifty. They're like forty nine. So I could go for like early forties would be my top off. Sarah Paulson would be my uh, she would my, my top off is still in the twenties, probably like really twenty six. That would be oh like my god, months, maybe just two years older. Yeah, I just I'm too much of a child for them. They're sophisticated and like I I I feel like I would just be too much work for them. Oh my god, I get it, I get it. Okay, um, la- last song you listen to on repeat. Um, Touch Me by the Doors. All right. I fucking love the doors. Getting presents or giving presents? 
giving. I hate getting. First celebrity you had a crush on? Emma Stone. Ooh, I love Emma Listen, Stone. Listen, I, I was, this, this was when I first figured out I was gay. I was, we, zombie land. I was in, like, middle school. We watched it, and I was like, why am I only attracted to her? Which I guess kind of now uh, plays into the fact of, uh, apparently I have a type. You love redheads. But I don't, I don't have, a, like, I enjoy redheads, but, like, I don't have a specific type. Okay. Well, you like feminine, more feminine women. Yeah, feminine. I'm not opposed to stems. Just, uh, I feel like it'd be a power struggle and who's going to be top. And Me, <laughs> Me too. I'm not, not going to be a bottom. Me. <laughs> Maybe for, the, for, the, for, the, for the right, listen, for the right femme, I would bottom. Me too. For sure. If the, if the scenario worked out just perfect and like the weather was just precise, the wind blowing just the right way, I'd bottom. I feel that. I feel that on an existential level. <laughs> oh my God. You're funny. Well, Shay, thank you so much for being on this podcast. If you want to check out more about Shay, you can find her on TikTok at fingercurl9000. <laughs> As always, you can find me on all platforms at Brie Logan. If you enjoyed this episode, please drop us a rate on Apple Podcasts. Leave us a little written review. Helps us get discovered by more queer people just like you. That's it for this episode, my queers. Thank you for listening, subscribing. If you're not subscribed on Apple Podcasts, what the fuck are you doing? Hit that subscribe button. Give us a follow on Spotify. If you love this episode, drop us a rating. Be you. Be queer. Stay safe. And we will see you on the next episode.